two ways to look at project management. You could look at it from the lens of traditional, which is the scope is fixed. The schedule and the budget are estimated. Do you work in a company where management's major concern is let's fix that scope so everything else stays the same? <laughs> I, I can tell you it doesn't work. People think it does, it doesn't. Then we have the world of agile where we flip this triangle on its head and scope is flexible or estimated and schedule and budget are fixed. What do I mean by that? What I just showed you was an example of a time box. If you fix the time box, the question is what scope can I fit in. You see, the scope is now flexible. The time box is rigid, but the scope that you fit in is flexible, right? So some visual conceptualizations in project management. We have predictive project management. Looks like that. We have the world of agile, which looks like this because it's a series of experiments or iterations to get to your goal. And very popular in PMI space today, we have a hybrid hybridization combine agile and predictive to give you the best of both worlds, okay? But the one I really want to hone in on is this one, linear, right? For the most part, even though in what we call traditional project management, we find that change still happens. It's just how we manage change that's different. So for the traditional project management piece, your best bet is to go down the route of the process groups understand that there are five groups of processes. Like I said in the beginning, as we were filling the application form, you've got initiating, you got planning, you got executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. Five groups of processes, okay? What do we do in these five groups? Let me break it down very quick for you. The very first one is initiating. This is where we develop a project charter. And on top of that, we identify our stakeholders. Second thing we do is plan, planning, right? We plan everything under the sun. Scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communications, risk procurement, and stakeholder. Then we have executing. This is where you're carrying out the work, you're executing the plan, you're creating deliverables, you are auditing the work process, and so on. Then we have monitoring and controlling where you are reporting on the project and you're making changes. And then we have closing. Right? You're closing out either a phase in the project or the entire project. The deliverable is transitioned. The final report is created. You're examining drivers. The lessons learned are archived and more. Okay? Output, project charter from initiating, project management plan from planning, the deliverable from executing with good leadership, output from monitoring and controlling are these work performance reports majorly and then from closing it's the transitioning of what you did okay hit the pause button and take a screenshot because this might help you as you fill in your application form let's take it to the final step before we close out for today on top of all this you got what i call the process group pentagon because we got five groups of processes but we also have 10 areas of knowledge that span across these groups of processes. So here are the knowledge areas and they're not in any particular order and they are not on the different pieces of the Pentagon for any deliberate reason. It's just the way the visual ended up being. All right, so the areas of knowledge are uh, as follows. Let me give you a breakdown of the knowledge areas first before um, anything else. So we have integration, which is the overall coordination of the project. This is what project managers must not compromise. You ever pulled your hair out feeling I'm all over the place, I don't know what's going on. Oh, maybe you're challenged in integration, you're not able to keep it cohesively. And honestly, a lot of PMs are not that great in keeping everything together. They're good in one area or two or three, but you've got to be an all-rounder. Integration is what mimics that, being an all-rounder. So everything coming next, you've got to combine them. All right, what is next? Scope. Scope management, schedule management, cost management, quality management, resource management, communications management risk management, procurement management, and stakeholder management, you've got to be able, this is what I'm saying in essence, 
you got to be able to combine all these pieces. Let's go back. You got to be able to combine, if I can get my pen to work, all these pieces. You got to be able to combine them, unify them, coordinate them. And when you do that, that's what integration is all about. So integration brings it all together. All right. So to finish off the visual, you got integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communications, risk procurement, stakeholder management. And that's what forms the knowledge areas. So what have we learned today? We've learned about the PMP exam, a ton about the PMP exam. But I've also taken you through how to complete the application. I've taught you some agile. I've taught you the process groups. Now I've taught you the knowledge areas. Final thing before you go. You can't go without principles. So what did we learn in the Agile Manifesto? Individuals and interactions, right? Over processes and tools and so on. The layer at the bottom, those are principles. And that's going to help you up the ante on the individuals and the interactions. Okay. So at the bottom there, I have 12 principles from the PMI, which are very leadership focused. That is the final thing I'm going to show you today. Here we go. The 12 principles from the Project Management Institute. Number one, you got to be a good steward. You got to be responsible. You got to be diligent and respectful. Respectful to the resources entrusted to you, be they human, equipment, materials, supplies, facilities. Number two, collaborate. You got to create a collaborative project team environment. Number three, you got to effectively engage stakeholders. You got to effectively engage them from a point of collaboration. You got to think team customer. I look at a lot of people, they, they're always moaning about their customer. Oh, my customer, my customer, my customer. Hi, Uchi, how are you doing? Good to see one of my friends from the training program. Good to see you, Uche. How are you? Let me know when the big day is. Is it approaching? <laughs> I'll put you on blast, buddy. You can tell me in secret. Don't worry. All right. Number four, value. It just says focus on value. You got to focus on value. If it's not valuable, don't do it. Number five, systems. Recognize, evaluate, and respond to systems interactions. Number six, leadership. Demonstrate leadership behaviors. Number seven, tailor. Tailor based on context. Tailoring is so important. And all this is saying is take all of this project management stuff and appropriate it to your project as needed. You can't use or shouldn't use the whole kitchen sink for every single project. Number eight, quality. Build quality in. Think Kaizen, fitness for use. Conformance to requirements, customer satisfaction. Number nine, complexity. Navigate complexity. Break it down. The way to navigate complexity, just break it down, break it down, break it down. You know, I know the PETA people are going to be mad at me, but the saying goes, how do you eat an elephant? A bite at a time. <laughs> It's not a very nice visual, but all they're trying to say is how do you attack a big problem? How do you attack complexity? You break it down. And that helps you to become more agile. You break it down, break it into iteration. That's all this is saying. Number 10, risk. Optimize risk responses. Makes sense. Make sure you select the best risk approach for the situation and for the project. Number 11. Adaptability, embrace adaptability and resiliency. It just says be agile. That's the summary of this. And number 12, change. Enable change to achieve the envisioned future state. And with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our presentation for today. If you really mean business and you want to be with one of the best in the business, you want to be with a buddy who has not only gotten certified, but has shown prowess in the world of predictive and agile. Someone who has actually gotten their feet wet and hands dirty in various industries, various companies like Honeywell and Motorola and Caremark at the time. Now, 
CVS, right? American Airlines, Skillsoft. I mean, the list goes on and some of my clientele, you know them very well. The FBI is one of my clientele, U.S. Army, the Air Force, the U.S. Air Force out in Europe the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers who I have volunteered for, so many firms worldwide, Department of Transport, Department of Commerce. If you truly mean business, I just want to encourage you to hit the button to join. Why wouldn't you join a program that is created by someone that has the kind of experience that I have? It's not all that fluff stuff that you see, like someone who was microwaved and came out of the oven like yesterday. No, I got certified in 20, 2005. Sometimes I forget when I got certified, 2005. I know that's going to date me. Oh, my goodness, that's 18 years. People who are 18 already, they're working. <laughs> they're grown and working. So I hope this uh, gives you some confidence to join my program again. My program is called Elite PMP. And to join, all you need to do is go on down to tinyurl.com forward slash elite PMP when you join the program. Right here, whether it's LinkedIn or wherever you found this, I need you to message me because I have some really awesome freebies for you. If you do join the program, send an email to support at praiseyon.com and let me know. I'm going to verify that you really join the program, please join the program. And then I am going to send you a boatload of additions. I'm going to send you this book. I'm going to send you this book. I'm going to send you a third book. And I'm going to load you on ammo. I call it ammo. Knowledge ammo to ace the exam. you got to understand where I'm coming from. I'm a pragmatic trainer. This isn't about passing the exam alone. No, this is about long tail. I want to see you dominate in the project management space. I want to see you doing great things. I want to see you blowing it up, getting the bag, being a boss. I want to see you being a boss, not playing the small game, oh, I'm project manager. I'm just working the best I can. I, no, none of that, none of that. I want to see you blow this thing up. If you mean business, I want you to join my course today and you have a friend for life. You have someone who will always help you get to that next level. All right. So I don't know what you're waiting for. Are you still there? Seriously? <laughs> Go to tinyurl.com, Elite PMP. Let's get this show on the road. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you again, hopefully soon. Those of you who are hiding, I, I see you. Some of you, my students. You're hiding. You don't want to get certified, but I'm looking for you. I've got at least 20 to 30 delinquent PMPs at any time, but I usually catch up with them. I find them. I find them. Like the bounty hunter, I find them. I get them certified. All right. Thank you very much. I wish you all the very best. You take care and bye for now.